My name is Joe Karikezi. Uh, I'm Rwandan, also a filmmaker. So I was born in Rwanda, um, in the north, at Rubavu, 85. And then after the genocide, we moved in Kigali, me and my brother and my sister. Uh, we lost our father during the genocide and some members of some, some of our siblings. And uh, yeah, my mother died way before. Uh, we were six, six in the family. Uh, we, were, we were like four boys and two girls. Um, two of them died before the genocide of uh, sickness. Um, one of my sister when the genocide I guess the Stutsi happened in 94, she was in Butare, in the south. So when it started, she had to survive on her own through up to Congo as a refugee, and uh, she died in that, uh, in that area. So me and my older brother, older sister, so we survived in Gisenyi. <coughs> we were hiding in uh, in some houses of, like uh, for, for, for my brother, you know, my brother had uh, some friends, so they, they helped us. Uh, so my father died uh, at that time during the genocide. And then after we had to start a new life. So we survived, uh, we were three, my older brother and my older sister. So they took care of me since I was young because uh, I lost my mother when I was one year old. So my sister was like my mom, my brother was like my father. So they took care of me uh, even after genocide. So we had really to, to stay together as a family. I joined the filmmaking yeah, because of all the stories I went through. And that was the way of expressing myself. So I chose, I chose media, I chose cinema to, to tell stories. On the other hand, on my side, I'm, I'm a director. So I made so far two feature films, two long movies. Uh, Imbavazi, Le Pardo. It's my first feature film that I made in 2000. It was released in 2013. And then after I made uh, The Mass of the Jungle, so in Bavazi, the pardon, it's a story of uh, trying to, to understand the forgiveness on genocide because that was, that was also my main question when I grew up because I was asking myself if I knew someone who killed my father, will I forgive? And then while making and writing this movie, I learned a lot about forgiveness. And then after I made the documentary, uh, uh, it's called the Portrait of Reconciliation, uh, Rwanda Portrait of, of Reconciliation. And then it's uh, stories of survivors and perpetrators talking about forgiveness. And then through the, the discussion, I learned a lot about forgiveness and how really Rwanda, uh, with this choice of uh, helping Rwandese to live together, contributed really in the development of the country. It, it was not easy. It was really a tough decision, but I'm happy this decision happened. Even me, when it, when, when it happened, I was not happy, but after some years, after making Mbavazi the pardon, after meeting survivors who forgive, and perpetrators who are in the society, uh, living and trying to develop the country, then I understood uh, this choice was necessary for the Rwanda to move on and uh, achieve what we achieved so far. What happened to Rwanda, the, the genocide against the Tutsi was really, it's the horrific uh, situation that happened to us. And the world and people should really know about it so that it doesn't repeat again. And then the role of the movie uh, and storytelling helps, 
helps us really tell those stories so that uh, it doesn't get forgotten. Forgotten. So it's a, it's a, it's a responsibility for each one. And the filmmaking, it's really, it's expensive, but we try always to adapt on the situation. That's why even my first feature I made was not a bigger budget. It was a small budget, but my target was uh, to be able to tell that story. And I had really convinced people and friends to come on board. So for us at this moment, we train more people. We try to make sure people collaborate with each other so that we can help each other to, to tell our story, even if there is no enough uh, budget, enough funding, but our aim is really to make good quality of films, because if you make a bad quality, a bad uh, movie, uh, it will disappear, so uh, people will not uh, watch it, so you are, you, you are, the story will disappear. So we have, we are trying to, uh, to enhance the skills of people, training them, but also trying to collaborate, but at the same time also uh, raising funds for other movie, bigger movie. Uh, there are some stories that really it's inevitable to make it without uh, fund. Like at this moment we are, we are raising funds for a feature film uh, that will tell a story of uh, what happened in Misesero. So Richard Hall is the main producer. Uh, Yvette Rugasabonga also is part of the producing team. I was, I co-wrote the film with a Nigerian director and I'm part of the producing team. But this, this kind of movie uh, deserves support, deserves funds for it to, 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 to be well made. So we, we all trying to push in all corners, so that if people watch Bicesero stories, what happened, how people fought for their life, uh, how people really were ready to, to prove that they deserve to live. So then you understand it really needs uh, money, support, funding, and uh, good partners for this film to be there for so many years. It's a fight, so we, we, make sure, we always try to, to make sure that uh, we reach our goal. So for like the story Bicesero, we are pushing and knocking doors from all over the world, in Rwanda, in, in Europe, in America, so that the fund uh, is there and we have a great team, great actors, the script is there, so our goal as producers is to, to keep pushing. There's another movie on Captain Bai Diang. It's a Senegalese who was in Rwanda uh, during the, 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 the genocide against the Tutsi. So he managed to save people uh, without a gun, just really putting his life uh, in risk. He, 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 he saved more than 600 people. So for this, this story, when I had, it, I had about it, I was really touched. So I decided to make it as my next feature film. So the script is ready, we are raising funds, we are almost on 50% of the budget. But the plan is really to, to tell those stories that deserve to be on screen. Because uh, like Captain Bai, he's a hero, an uh, African hero who really sacrifice his life for, for Randis. If we take an example in Bicesero, Virara, Virara himself is a hero who convinced his, his people to fight for their right. So those kind of story deserve to be on screen and it's our responsibility to, to, to do all we can, uh, our skills, our means, for, for all this story not to disappear, so we, they deserve to be on the big screen. It's 30 years, it's, it's, it's like yesterday, so it's, uh, the, the, the wounds are still fresh, the, the pain is still there, 
So from one generation, we are still, even the next generation, they, they, they will be, they still affected but by what happened. So um, the movies uh, that we have now, uh, I can say maybe it covers a, a small percentage of what could have been told. We still have a lot. Uh, like for example, I just mentioned two films we are developing on Birara, on what happened in Visesel, on Captain Bai, on so many heroes we have. We have so many stories to, to, that, to tell which really deserve to be on screen. Me, I can tell a few of them, but other filmmakers, they still have a lot to tell. So it's, uh, I can say it's still fresh. Even, even, even t till now, there are so many movies that comes out uh, about the Holocaust, the genocide, what happened for, for Jewish. It's more than uh, 50 years, uh, even 60 years. So for us, we still have a lot to do, uh, to, to preserve and to tell all these stories. So 30 years for me, it's just, uh, it's just yesterday because I still recall those days, uh, the street, the, what I saw, the, the bodies, the, and then the pain is there. My kids also, there is a way that it affects them. Uh, and it's really, we still have a long way. But what is really positive is that Rwandese, we managed to, yeah, to live with this pain, but also think about our future, develop our country and uh, live together to the Rwandans, to all my, my brothers and sisters, mothers and uh, fathers. Um, 30 years, uh, is, it's, it's really a long way we went through from what happened to our country. The genocide against the Tutsi, our responsibility is not to forget. So we, we have to learn from what happened to keep building the better future. And um, so far, the work done by the government, the survivors, it's really on my side, I have to, to salute their, their contribution and how really we Rwandans also, we, we managed to, to live together. So it's, uh, it's 30 years. And then it's really, uh, I can say it's, we still have more step to, keep, to make, to, to make shine our next generation. So let's, uh, let's keep living in peace. We are Rwandans.